Guys, we definitely learned something here. Hi everyone, I'm James and this is Meatster. Thanks for coming to watch. Today, I think, is gonna be an absolutely cracking episode because it answers a question that I've had and if you love steak, I'm sure you've had it too. To answer the question, is Kobe beef worth the money? One of these steaks I've never had before and that's this one on this end. I'll tell you all about that in a moment. Just to start from this end, we have a great quality British rare breed sirloin steak that's had about 35 days of aging, so it's no slouch. This is a Galician sirloin steak. If you don't know anything about that, I'll put a link up here to a video where we've used this steak before. But this is a very flavoursome steak from an old cow. I know that doesn't sound great, but it really truly is. So we've got two great contenders over here but it's on this side today that we're really interested, I think. Now, these are both Japanese. There's contention about the word Wagyu. How can you use it? Who can use it? What does it mean? Why is it so expensive? Well, today I wanted to find out. I've got here A4 sirloin Sakura Wagyu a Wagyu from a specific part of Japan, but it's not one of the famous three brands of Wagyu steak such as Kobe. Now Kobe must be the most famous and famously expensive steak on the planet. I've actually never eaten a Kobe steak before, so I've been looking at this thing, wondering if I can do it justice, and I hope so, but just so we're in no doubt as to the cost of these things and why a lot of people will say it's not worth it, these are both 250 grams each. This is about 350 and this is about 350. This 350 gram sirloin steak here would cost about 10 to 11 pounds. This 350 gram steak here is probably about 16 to 18 pounds. Now this 250 gram Wagyu steak cost me 50 pounds. So that's already a massive jump. And this Kobe steak here, this 250 gram Kobe steak cost me 103 pounds so it's twice as expensive as the already very expensive wagyu and a lot more expensive than either of these well why why is it so expensive i want to try a small piece without any salt whatsoever i want to tell you exactly what kobe beef tastes like and i'm going to do the same with this wagyu here so there are these small pieces on the outside and this knife i mean i didn't need to use this extravagantly sharp knife really, because in fact these steaks even smell a bit like butter. So I'm gonna cook these little bits here and then I'm gonna come back and see you in a second. All right guys, I've just cooked those really quickly. They had about 45 seconds and they've rested for a couple of minutes already. So, <laughs> I'm gonna go for the Wagyu first. I mean, it smells incredible. It smells so savory as if it had been salted. So, oh my God. Oh my God. How can a beef without salt taste like that? This is the Kobe now. This is what I've been promised to have fireworks from. Let's do it. Mm. Completely different in flavor. It's a lot meatier. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay, that's completely not what I expected at all. It's ridiculously beefy. It's a very strong flavor. This is not what I expected. This is a very strong flavor of beef, but not the most attractive beefy flavor I've ever had. It's not a straightforward 
flavour that you normally get out of beef. It's almost too much, it's too intense. If I just go back to the normal Wagyu. Oh, I see. It's sweet, it's unctuous, it's oily, but nowhere near as oily as the Kobe. Despite being the same grade, it's less intense of a flavour, it's slightly sweeter. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. I think I just need to adjust a little bit. And when I taste again, I'll have a better idea because Ooh, I think you can do some magical things with these two pieces of beef. And just so we're clear on this, this is definitely not the last video you're gonna see with this Kobe and this Wagyu. I'm gonna be doing all sorts of things with them. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see what I do in future with Kobe, Wagyu, and all types of other steak. But for now, let me go and cook the other pieces, the big pieces, and then let's taste those. Alright guys, it really doesn't take long to cook these steak. They weren't that thick in the first place. So, I'm intrigued to find out what's gonna happen here. And I think I need a glass of wine. If you're interested, it's an aged Bordeaux called Chateau Leoville Barton. It's from 1995. It's one of my favorite wines from a good vintage and it will go very nicely. But anyway, the steaks are the star of the show. Let us start on this side with my standard steak. This is still 35 day dry aged rare breed British beef and it is fantastic. I cook these for about two minutes on each side, these fatter ones. The, the Japanese only got about 40 seconds aside. Here we go. Cheers. Mm. Well, that was absolutely delicious. It's juicy, it's flavoursome, plenty of fattiness in there. It's extremely tender, it's got a slight sweetness to it, and the ageing has, it sort of firms up the texture, but at the same time, it creates such a good flavour that it's so worth it. This is the Galithian, which is a star steak in itself. It has a completely different flavour to the British beef. It's slightly gamier, but it's got like a mushroomy flavour. It's less sweet, equally as tender, it's juicy. So here we go to the Wagyu. As I said, this is A4 Wagyu, which is right up there. Of course, you can get A5. That's even fattier, much fattier than this can be. Interestingly, from what I know from my Japanese friends, this cut sirloin is actually the favoured cut to eat a Wagyu steak. Here we go, with salt. I was hoping I wasn't going to like this Japanese beef as much as I have because it's an expensive hobby. Even if you're starting here, once you get to here, it's game over. Someone told me in the comments not to bother salting Japanese Wagyu steak and they were totally right. It's not really made much difference. The flavour is less sweet, way more savoury, there's lots of umami. It is mouth-watering, it's deep in flavour, absolutely stunning. Here we go. I cooked the Kobe beef in this fat, um, which I have to taste. Here we go, cheers. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome in itself. That fat is, the, is delicious. Creamy, oily, savoury. Had a slight crunch on the outside. Melted in my mouth, it was like butter. Here we go.
it's so fatty, it's completely marbled all the way through. You can see it, it's not even melted. Oh my God. That's so sweet. It doesn't taste anything like that little end piece I had before. This is something else. This is not like any of these, in fact. It's even completely different from the Wagyu. Now, the Wagyu has got marbling in there. Just on visible inspection, it doesn't have as much marbling as the Kobe does, even though it sort of looked like it would. Hmm. That's interesting. It's actually nowhere near as tender as the Kobe. Guys, we definitely learned something here. We came here to find out what it was like going from very good aged British beef, Galithian, through to real Japanese A4 Wagyu, and then we've got the Kobe, the A4 Kobe. I can't imagine what A5 is like. We came here to find out, is it worth a ridiculous amount of money? Here's what I'm gonna say. There's no doubt that it's something different, something special. It's completely different to any of the others even quite different to the Wagyu. The Wagyu is delicious and juicy and fatty and tender and flavoursome. But when you have them next to each other like this, hands down, the Kobe beef takes everything that that has got, turns it up to 11, turns it up to 12, keeps going. It's the spinal tap of beef. The flavour is intense, it erupts in your mouth. It's sweet and meaty and everything all at the same time. To answer the question, is Kobe beef worth the money? I can't say yes to that, because that's down to each person. It's incredibly, ridiculously, stupidly expensive. But on the other hand, one steak like that is definitely enough for four people for that evening. Not meaning that you won't serve other steaks or other food, but you don't need to eat too much of it. It is very fatty, it's quite filling. You can really feel it going down. <laughs> but for that flavor sensation, it's only up to you to decide whether that's worth 25 pounds per person for that piece. I would do it for a dinner party. I would do it for really good friends. I'm definitely doing it for my wife and kids, for them to taste it. I want them to know what it's like, why I care about it, why it's worth looking into. This is rare. You know, it's like 1% of Wagyu beef is Kobe. And I think there are a couple of importers in the UK and only several countries around the world, maybe 50 places you can buy it from. And so, you know, it's very limited. Now, if this is just too much of a stretch for you, this Wagyu is definitely 90% of the way there. This is an absolute privilege, guys, to sit here. And for whoever's watching, thank you for watching. I'm gonna sit and finish the rest of my beef. It's been a very steaky afternoon. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you wanna see more content about great steaks from all over the world, including Kobe, including Wagyu, Galithian, British rare breeds, USDA, Australian, Argentinian, Uruguayan, we're gonna test it all, eat it all, cook it all, cook it all differently. And if you enjoy that sort of content, subscribe to the channel, it's very much appreciated. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Comment down below, what do you think? It's been a delicious tasting. Cheers. <laughs>